Houston, Texas, 2010. Doctors at the Texas Heart Institute examine a 59-year-old man complaining of chest pains and make an astounding discovery. The patient has a three-chambered heart, similar to that of a reptile. Researchers attributed the rare condition to an evolutionary phenomenon called atavism. When a lost trait of a distant ancestor reemerges in a modern organism. So the idea is if you look at where we evolved from, we were first fish. Fish have a two-chambered heart. And then we came on land, we're more like a reptile that has a three-chambered heart. And then eventually the four-chambered heart as we became mammals and then humans. So interestingly, during development, that same sequence of evolution is played out again as embryos. So if there's any sort of defect in the embryo along the way, it could get stalled out of that earlier state. And now this man has a heart that's more typical of our distant ancestors, the reptiles. While the discovery of a human with a reptilian heart is incredibly rare, other genetic conditions have been found that suggest a link with reptiles. Since the 1800s, over 100 cases of human tails have been reported in medical journals. People with a disease, ichthyosis, have dry, scaly skin. And people with the diseases called syndactyly and ectrodactyly have fused fingers and claw-like hands. But if such anatomical irregularities are a link to our ancient ancestors, as some scientists suggest, could it be that they are not the remnants of a reptilian stage in human development, but instead reveal that humans once commingled with reptilian aliens? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes and believe that further clues can be found in the stories of China's first emperor, Fu Shi. Fu Shi is one of the mythical rulers of China, and he's considered to be uh, the original or prototypical man. He was created along with his sister, Nu Hua. They were humanoid in form, in the sense that their upper bodies were that of humans, but their lower bodies were that of snakes and they're often represented with snake tails intertwined together. Similar stories of reptilian humanoid beings exist in cultures around the ancient world, including Japan, Greece, and South America. We even have good drawings and reliefs of many of these fantastic creatures. And so it's, is it possible that some of these creatures really are aliens that look like that? And it seems like in some cases that is probably the case. Other unusual anomalies also appear to mirror the descriptions of divine beings from ancient texts. Millions of infants are born with blue patches of skin called Mongolian spots, evoking the blue skin gods common to India and Egypt. There have also been many cases of gigantism throughout history, bringing to mind biblical stories of the Nephilim, giants that were said to be the hybrid offspring of humans and divine beings called the Watchers. Within us is the whole evolutionary development of humankind, as well as the other species that humans developed from, reptiles, fish, and so forth. Extrapolating this idea, if extraterrestrials had a hand in retooling our DNA, then do we also carry their genetic makeup within us, as we would? We know today that our DNA contains a lot of junk DNA that we still don't understand. So when we see these genetic anomalies surface in physical form in children, it could be that it's not an anomaly, it's actually a lost extraterrestrial gene, a marker that's now resurfacing at the right time.